Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IS Academy. Today, 15th November 2024. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss. The first article, Air Severe for Second Day in Delhi. This article is talking about the deteriorating air quality in the national capital and the, the introduction of GRAP Phase 3, Graded Response Action Plan. The Phase 3 of this plan is introduced in the national capital to manage the air quality. And this article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. And the second article in Manipur. Armed for the Special Power Act reimbursed in six police station areas. This article is talking about the reimbursation of Armed for the Special Power Act in, in, the, in six police station areas in the state of Manipur considering the recent resurgence of violence. And this article is talking, this article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. And the third article, Tajikistan lost over 1000 glaciers in the last three decades. This glacier melting in Tajikistan and this issue was highlighted by the Energy Minister of Tajikistan in the COP29 which is currently happening in Baku, Azerbaijan's capital and the and the article is taken from the newspaper The Hindu. Before moving into the discussion, we have two important announcements from Shangarayas Academy. The first annou announcement is regarding the pre storming test series batch. So, we know that prelims is getting tougher every year. So, therefore, writing as much as questions is the only way to crack UPSC prelims. And the third batch will be starting on 21st November 2024. The link for the registration will be given in the description. Do register and challenge yourself. And the second announcement is regarding the chakra. This is the initiative of Shankar IAS Academy with the exclusive focus on current affairs. So, current affairs is equally important in mains as well as in the prelims. Uh, the brochure for detail is given in the description. Read it and attend the class. Look at this newspaper article taken from Indian Express. Delhi air severe for second day. Supreme Court to hear petition on pollution on November 18. We know that in India, we have a right to clean environment. Right. We have a right to clean environment. This is a right which is covered under Article 21, under right to life. But the national capital, especially in the winter times, is going through severe air pollution. That means the air quality index is currently above 400. And the Supreme Court is about to hear the petition regarding the uh, regulations taken by the government. So, this petition will be heard on November 18. And followed by that, the Commission for Air Quality Management has introduced certain restrictions under GRAP third stage. We know GRAP means Graded Response Action Plan. It is a plan introduced in 2017 to bring an immediate response for the air quality problem at the same time to manage the air pollution. So, in this background, let us discuss more about this. First, we will start with the causes for the air pollution in the Delhi. We know that we have already discussed this many times. First is the stubble burning. We know the Delhi is surrounded by many agrarian states such as Uttar Pradesh, Haryana and Punjab. So, after the harvest, the farmers will burn the crop residue. This will cause air pollution in Delhi. And second one is the vehicular emission. Even though Delhi is a small state, the population is population density is high. At the same time, the demand for the vehicle is also going high. Therefore, the use of the vehicle will release harmful substances such as carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and other particulate matter into the atmosphere. And the third one is the construction. So, construction dust is the third major reason. We know that Delhi, especially uh, currently, we have a trend of a rapid rural to urban migration. So, this will automatically increase the demand for shelter in the urban area. This will automatically increase the demand for construction works. Therefore, the construction dust such as the particulate matter 2.5, particulate matter 10 will cause air pollution and it will affect the health also such as respiratory and cardiovascular issues. And then we have the industrial emissions. So, industrial emissions taking place within the state or outside the state will also cause air pollution and Delhi is affected by this. And the winter climate of the Delhi, we know that during the time of winter, the, the regions will experience something called temperature inversion, where a thin layer of hot, la hot atmosphere or thin layer of air will trap the cold air in uh, near the surface. And this will not only trap the cold air, it will also trap the harmful air pollutants in the, in the uh, near to the surface. And coming to the GRAP, we know that GRAP, it was introduced in 2017 to bring a rapid relief to the air pollution. And it was introduced by the Central Pollution Control Board. We will see what is Central Pollution Control Board shortly. And currently, we know that the Supreme Court has, and this rapid action plan was introduced followed by a Supreme Court directive. And what is the aim? We have already discussed that is aimed to tackle the Delhi's air pollution, especially in the winter times. So, there are different stages for this, uh, for the introduction. For example, in the first stage, if the air quality is poor, then there will be small restrictions. If the air quality is very poor, that means if the air quality, uh, air quality index is showing a score between 300 to 400, then the um, measures will be more uh, stricter. So, this rapid 
Therefore, this graded uh, response action plan is introduced in phase wise and this introduction will be based on the indication of air quality index. These are the restrictions that currently introduced under the uh, graph 3. That includes, before that we have to understand when this uh, graded response action plan stage 3 will be introduced. It will be introduced when the air quality score is between 3, 400 to 450. That is severe. The air, that means the air is very hazardous to the human health. And before that, we will also see what is air quality index shortly and what are the restrictions brought under this present graph stage 3. First one is the ban on construction activities. Second one is the transport of construction materials that are causing air pollution. And third one is the restrictions on diesel generators and the diesel vehicles. And the fourth one is the industrial activities are strictly regulated. And the first one is giving more importance to public transport. That means encouraging the people to use more public transport than the private transport to reduce the vehicle emission. And like I already said, the graph has different stages. The first stage, it will have only rest, uh, less or lax uh, restrictions and it will be introduced when the air quality index score is between 200 to 300. And the second stage, if the air quality index is between 300 to 400, then the second stage will be introduced. The, the, in, the restrictions will be more or less severe, but the intensity will increase according to the increase of the stages. Moving on, now we are going to see the air quality index. So, what is air quality index? It is a standard measure. Now, we are going to see the air quality index. What is air quality index? It is a standardized mechanism which indicates the quality of air and its and its impact on the human health. And it is released by the Central Pollution Control Board. The Central Pollution Control Board is established under the Water Act of 1974. And the Central Con Pollution Control Board is working under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And we also have a state pollution control boards in the state level to measure the air quality. The Central Pollution Control Board and the State Pollution Control Board not only uh, measures the air quality, they will also measure water quality as well as the noise pollution. And this air quality index was brought as a part of the Swachh Bharat mission. And it will measure certain pollutants such as particulate matter 2.5, particulate matter 10, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide and the sulfur dioxide. And they will also talk about the categories of the quality and this air quality index will also categorize the, uh, the present air quality into different stages. For example, poor, very poor, severe air quality and this index will also indicate how the present air quality is affecting the human health. So, based on that, the government can Im uh, implement measures to control the uh, activities at the same time, they can also take measures to control the air pollution. So, this is how the air quality index works. So, in this topic, we discussed the deteriorating air quality issue in the national capital Delhi and what are the measures taken and what are the causes and what is the graded action, response action plan which is introduced to control the air quality, air quality in the national capital. So, with this idea, try to answer this prelims practice question. The question is with reference to the graded response action plan in national capital of Delhi, consider the following statements. Statement 1. Graph is applicable only in Delhi national capital territory and it does not extend to adjoining areas. Statement 2. Under Graph stage 3, all construction and demolition activities without any exceptions are completely banned. Statement 3. Graph was implemented as a result of directives from the Supreme Court of India. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 and 3 only, Option C 3 only and Option D 1, 2 and 3. The answer is Option C 3 only. Statement 1 and Statement 2 are incorrect. With this, we will move to our next article. Look at this newspaper article taken from Indian Express. Tajikistan lost over 1000 glaciers in the last three decades. That is the country Tajikistan lost nearly 1000 glaciers in the last 30 years. And this issue was highlighted by Delar Juma, the energy minister of Tajikistan in the COP29, which is currently happening in the capital of Azerbaijan, that is Baku. So, let us discuss more about glacier and its influence in the globe. So, before that, we have to understand what is meant by a glacier. Glacier means a large mass of ice formed due to compaction. So, we will see how it is formed. Let us imagine that this is a mountain depression. So, uh, located in the higher latitude region. So, this region will experience precipitation in the form of snow. And we, can, we will take it as a snowflakes, for example. And the snowflakes will be collected in the depression over a period of time. And it will go through compaction. That means, it will go under immense pressure. And due to this pressure, compaction will happen and eventually this ice flakes will, will be accumulated and will result in the formation of 
glacier and if you look the structure of this glacier the outer part will be cooler and the inner part will be warmer comparatively warmer therefore the melting will be happening in the in the bottom or the inner part therefore after a particular period of time due to the melting this glacier will be moved down to the mountain so this is how the glacier movement is happening and this is how the glacier is forming and while moving from the mountain depression it will also carry certain debris such as rocks and moraines and it will deposit when it reaches the water so this is how the uh, other landforms formed due to the deposition of glaciers such as uh, glacier lake uh, lateral moraine medial moraine and all so this is this is how the glaciers are formed and this is how the glacier is acting as a geomorphic agent now we are going to see the types of the glaciers so generally based on the size we can classify the uh, glaciers into four categories first one is a cirque glacier and second one is a valley or mountain glacier and third one is a peat mount glacier and then we have the ice cap so ice cap means dome shaped glacier which is usually outflowing so you can see the outflow of this glacier and second one is a peat mount glacier it refers to the descending glacier and then we have the cirque glacier the term cirque itself means depression that means this glacier will be found in the depressions of the mountains and like i said it will move out of this depression after a particular period of time when it reaches the melting point and then we have the valley glacier it is formed side along the side of the mountains and based on the temperature also we can classify the glacier into different category for example polar glacier subpolar glacier and then we have the temperate glacier temperate uh, temperate glacier means uh, it will be uh, in the melting point that means it will it will it will have a combination of both ice as well as water that is what that that is mean by temperate glacier coming to the polar uh, subpolar glacier the subpolar glacier will be frozen during the time of winter and it will be melting during the time of summer but coming to the polar glacier throughout the year it will be frozen that means there will be no change and this kind type of uh, glacier can be found in in the country such as uh, Greenland and uh, the example of the uh, uh, temperate glacier is the Himalayan glaciers the glaciers found in the Himalayan region moving on now we are going to see the reasons behind the present glacial melting the first major reason is global warming means rise in the global average temperature so this is increasing day, uh, every year due to various reasons such as anthropogenic reasons uh, includes industrialization urbanization and the burning of fossil fuels and all and the second major reason is the human activities like i said anthropogenic reasons which includes industrialization and all and the global warming the global warming will increase the global temperature therefore these two reasons are interconnected that means the anthropogenic reasons will support the global warming and the global warming in it will result into accelerated glacier melting so this is how the global warming and human activities are contributing to the uh, accelerated glacial melting and third one is the precipitation changes this will affect the volume as well as the thickness of the glacier for example certain areas it will receive heavy precipitation of snow and if there is any change uh, due to climate shift or something definitely it will change the rate of the precipitation and it, it will eventually affect the uh, the size as well as the thickness of the glacier and other natural factors such as the volcanic activity increased rate of insulation due to various reasons can also accelerates the glacial melting and coming to the impact of the glacier melting we have rise in the sea level so uh, the glaciers are finally reaching ocean only if there is more melting of the glaciers then it will eventually accelerate the rising of the sea level this threats the life as well as the properties of the coastal cities and coastal communities and then we have the water scarcity if the glaciers are melted then regions which are depending on the water coming from these glaciers will experience a lack of water for both commercial as well as their domestic purposes and changes in the weather pattern for example uh, if the glaciers are melted just imagine that there is no glacier on this planet definitely there will be an increasing rate of insulation which will raise the temperature to the maximum so this glaciers are not only you know giving fresh water this glaciers are not only giving water instead it also has something called albedo effect which means the ability to reflect the insulation that means incoming solar radiation if there is no glaciers then definitely it will leads to the increasing temperature and then we have the ecosystem disruption we know that we know that certain fauna they are depending on the glacier ecosystem for survival for example penguin polar bear so recently we know that there was a there was a news that the greeneries are seeing in antarctica so the biggest concern regarding this was the uh, life of the polar bear and penguin and increased risk of natural disasters that means increased frequent natural disasters for example cold wave heat waves these kind of uh, issues will be experiencing frequently if there is 
an increased rate of melting of glaciers and reduced albedo we already said that means once there is no uh, glaciers or if the if the majority of the glaciers are melted then definitely the earth then definitely the earth will lose its ability to reflect the insulation back to the atmosphere therefore if the albedo effect is reduced then eventually it will result in the increased rate of temperature so this is the impact of glacier melting and what are the initiatives taken in the global level to protect the glaciers first one is a paris first one is a paris agreement which was signed in the year 2015 as per this the entire globe is responsible for reducing the climate change or the uh, in, uh, reducing the temperature uh, below 1.5 degree to the pre industrial uh, relative to the pre industrial level so uh, every as a part of this every nation has their own nationally determined contributions and uh, uh, net zero uh, missions and then we have the polar research programs for example the european union's cryostat it is a satellite which is used to monitor the uh, monitor and gather the real time information regarding the glaciers and then we have the national and then we have the national glacial risk mitigation plan mitigation program this is focusing in assessing the assessing and monitoring of the stability of the glacial lakes and preventing or uh, uh, incidents such as glacial lake outburst for example recently india experienced this and therefore this program will be focusing more on assessing and on gathering of real time information regarding the stability and vulnerability of that uh, vulnerability of that region and then we have the green bonds and the sustainable investments so in issuing green bonds will find investments for promoting sustainable development programs so this is the these are the initiatives taken in the global level to promote the protection of glaciers so in this topic we discussed the importance of glacier different types of glacier what is glacier and how it is acting as a geomorphic agent so in this background try to answer this previous year upsc prelims question this question was asked in the year 2010 the question is on the planet earth the fresh water available for use amounts to about less than 1 percentage of the total water found statement 2 of the total fresh water found on the planet earth 95 percentage is bound up in the polar ice caps and glaciers which of the following statements given above is or are correct state option a one only option b two only option c one and two only and option d neither one nor two the answer is option a one only the statement two is wrong so with this we will move to our next article look at this newspaper article taken from indian express in manipur aspa reimposed in six police station areas center says situation they are still volatile so this topic for the discussion is about the armed forces special power act and the center reimposed this act in six police station areas in the state of manipur because of the recent resurgence of the violence and what is this uh, armed forces special power act simple line we can say that it is a act which gives more power to the armed forces armed forces not includes military air force navy coastal guard national security guard like that so this act will give more power to the armed forces so so now we will start the discussion so if you start the start with the background of this act we can we can trace back to the year 1942 we know the importance of 1942 that year is known for quit india movement so that time then british government introduced something called armed forces special power ordinance to suppress the quit india movement but in the year 1947 we got independence and india became an independent nation and we had three major problems first one is the partition second one is it second one is the construction of the economy and third one is the construction of a state and this construction of state was challenged by various problems such as the hesitancy of the principally states to join the indian union at the same time at the same time uh, the insurgency and uh, secessionist movements in the northwestern part of india and you have to note that in 1950s the nagas rebelled against the state of india and in 1956 they the nagas established a parallel government that is a na nationalist naga council established a parallel government in the northeastern region and in the year 1958 then president dr rajendra prasad promulgated the armed forces special power ordinance again to bring order in the northeastern part of india and in the in the same year in the monsoon session the indian parliament introduced this as an act which gives more power to the armed forces so this is the brief background of the armed forces special power act and why this act is introduced this act is introduced to bring order in the disturbed area what is mean by disturbed area disturbed area means regions which are affected due to law and order issues that because of the religious violence or inter caste issues or due to various linguistical or other uh, you know ethnical violence so that region is known as disturbed area this region will have a law and order problem who will have the power to introduce the declare the disturbed area before 1972 the central government had the power to declare a region 
as disturbed area but there was an amendment in this uh, armed forces special power act in the year 1972 therefore uh, now both the state government and the central government have concurrent right or power to have declare a region disturbed but in the but at the same time even though that is concurrent we know that the central government will have more say on that that means the central government can override the uh, the recommendation of the state government presently working and this is mentioned in the section 3 of the armed forces special power act coming to the key provisions like i have already said declaring the disturbed area the central government will have the power to do that or the state government also can do but the central government will have a more saying in that section 3 in the act and then granting special powers to the armed forces such as use of force even if the situation is very extreme or uh, the law and order uh, is is very deteriorating then the forces can even take high hand measures and then we have the uh, other special powers such as destruction of hideouts to find culprits or conspirators and arrest without warrant to bring law and order in that region and search without warrant to uh, seize arms and drugs and the third provision is related to the handling of the arrested person the arrested person should be uh, should be presented before the police station as soon as possible for legal oversight coming to the legal protection the legal protection is granted for the armed forces that means the armed forces will have legal protection in cases in 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 certain cases if they are taking measures without the prior permission from the central government moving on review and renew of the disturbed area so this can be defined as judicial intervention so in the year 1997 there was a case in the supreme court that case is known as naga people movement of human rights versus union of india this rights this case is related to the human rights violation that is happening uh, due to the power given to the armed forces under the armed forces special power act so therefore the the court studied it and the court said that the armed forces special power act is not arbitrary at the same time it is not violating the constitution therefore the court gave recommendations on do's and don'ts do's and don'ts in in a case in case an armed force is deployed in a disturbed area that means the armed force should not cross certain limits that limits were given in this judgment but the judgment was saying that the armed forces special power act is not arbitrary at the same time it is not violating the constitution and another uh, impact of this judgment was that the court insisted on reviewing the disturbed area every 6 months in order to decide whether the armed forces special power act has to be continued in that region or not we know that the military will always have a dictatorial nature therefore the even though the people needs military the people will not accept a military rule or they don't want to live under military presence because it will violate the restrictions that brought uh, by the uh, the military governments will violate the fundamental rights or the power given or the over power given to the militaries will also violate the fundamental rights so such as the article 21 the right to life and personal liberty article 13 right to equality that means the people in that disturbed re region will be ill treated or mistreated by the armed forces therefore so it will eventually perpetuates uh, the inequality within the nation and between the regions and it can also lead to several social issues such as stereotyping and all and then we have article 19 once the armed forces get sp special power under the act or once there is a uh, military presence is there then definitely there will be restrictions in the movement and as well as freedom of speech and right expression so these are the rights which are violated uh, or uh, affected due to the special power act due to the special power given to the armed forces and at the same time uh, this issue was also understood and studied by certain committees for example g1 ready committee studied the armed forces special power act in the year 2005 and uh, said that this is an instrument of oppression and and then government did not take any uh, decision on the recommendations and finally in 2015 new government came to power and they rejected it completely and in 2013 another committee the known as hedge committee studied the uh, special power act again and they also gave the same conclusion but both governments previous governments as well as the present government hasn't considered this recommendation so far so not the committee's name the first committee was the g1 ready committee uh, to study the armed forces special power act and that came in the year 2005 and the second committee was the hedge committee in the year 2013 and this committees are very important sometimes they will ask in the prelims so in this topic we discussed what is armed forces special power act its impact and uh, uh, its related aspects and uh, try to answer this prelims practice question based on our understanding under the armed forces special power act which of the following powers is given to the armed forces in a disturbed area statement 1 to arrest without a warrant statement 2 to arrest permissive without a warrant 
statement 3 to use force even to the extent of causing death the correct answer is option d all the three that is one two three all the three statements are correct yes all the three statements are correct the monthly current affair marathon for of shangra yes academy for the month october 2024 is available on our youtube channel watch it and prepare strongly for the prelims if you like the video hit the like button give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive on time update thank you have a nice day